There's been a lot of talk in the bass fishing industry about electronics lately, and I'm personally for electronics, but whether you are for them or against them, the number one fish finder in the world, Live Fish Finder, is absolutely free. And today I wanna to talk about that, so stay tuned. It's gonna be a good one. This video is brought to you by the Deep Dive app. This is an app that helps you to find and catch bass a lot quicker. Once you download the app, you can actually select the lake that you are fishing. You can select the water temperature, the water clarity, whether you're fishing around vegetation or if you're fishing in a windy or protected area. After you put that data in, the app is going to spit out some strategies and lures that you can use to go and catch bass in real time. This app is backed by thousands of different data points from hundreds of different tournaments. I've been using it and it is very accurate. If you're interested in downloading it, there is a free version and there is a paid version. You can click that link down below in the description and download it today. Now, if you guys haven't picked up from the thumbnail of this video, what I'm referring to when I'm talking about the number one fish finder in the world, I am talking about birds. I will find you, Bass. Look at me. Oh. Something was on my head. One of my favorite quotes from Davey Height was that he said that birds also fish for a living. And that is extremely true. If you guys don't know this, a lot of different types of birds actually eat the same bait fish like shad and bluegill and other bait fish that bass eat. So a lot of times when you see birds, that is going to be an area where bait is, and that is also going to be an area where bass are. Now, the best thing about using a bird as your fish finder is you don't have to aimlessly go around and idle and look at your graphs all day, you can visually see a bird. So as soon as you see it, you are actually directed, you actually know exactly where to go. And the other great thing about a bird is they are absolutely free. Like I talked about, they cost you zero dollars. So in this video, I just wanna tell you of three different situations that I have encountered on the water where birds really saved my butt and helped me to catch a lot more bass. Now there have been a lot more than just three times where birds have helped me on the water, but I think that these three situations can apply to just about anyone. Now, the first situation that I'm going to talk about actually happened to me as I was fishing Douglas Lake down in Tennessee in a Bassmaster Open event years ago. Now, this particular event was held in September. In September, pretty much across the United States is one of the toughest times of the year to go out and catch bass. For like two or three days of this practice period, I had really struggled to just go out there and consistently catch bass. I would catch one here, one there, but I wasn't putting anything together. Late on the third day of practice, I decided to go up the river on Douglas Lake. And as I was driving up the river, I was seeing different pockets and tributaries and creek arms. And I noticed as I went by this one particular area that there was a lot of white birds on the bank. And I'm not exactly sure what these birds were. I think they were egrets, but I'm not 100% sure. And I just happened to remember that. I, I went by it and I remembered there was like five or six of these white egrets that were on the bank. Now I actually went past that creek arm and I went and fished some different banks that looked good to me on a map. But as I was coming back down, those birds were in my mind. I pulled into that little creek arm and immediately I noticed that there was a lot of bigger size bait in this area. And also immediately, I started catching bass. This one little area, I mean, it was really full of a lot of fish. And the one thing that led me to that area were these birds. So I think that this is so important because this is something that we don't always intentionally do out there on the water. We don't intentionally look for certain types of birds like seagulls or blue herons or egrets. And it's something that can really cut down on your fishing time. So one thing that I have really started to do when I am attacking a body of water is simply drive around looking for birds. I see that, especially in clear water reservoirs, that there might be sections where you see a lot more birds, and that's typically where the bait is, and you're also going to find those bass. Now, another huge situation that has probably happened to you on the water as well is when birds can help you to find schooling bass. I was actually fishing on the Butler Chain of Lakes down in Florida, just fun fishing several years ago. And this actually scared me because I was, I was going down a bank of grass and all of a sudden I heard what sounded like a bowling ball drop from the air and hit the water, just a big splash. And of course I turned around 
and there was actually pelicans that were dive bombing the water and eating bait fish that they could see. And there were some seagulls mixed in and I was like blown away by this. I was like, what is going on? And so I actually idled out to where these pelicans were dive bombing the water. I picked up a top water and I was sitting in about 30 foot of water because this is actually a very deep lake in Florida. I took my top water, I cast it out there, and on the very first cast, I caught like a solid two and a half pound bass. Now the rest of the day, this is all that I did. I literally just would look around for pelicans or seagulls that were dive bombing the water. And what happens a lot of times when you see these birds actually bombing the water is that bass are pushing bait fish to the surface. And those birds can see from the air all those bait fish schools. So they will actually dive bomb into those schools and eat those bait fish that the bass are pushing to the surface. Now, one thing that I've noticed about this is that you kind of have to be quick in this situation because this isn't something that's going to happen constantly or all day. A lot of times the bass are gonna push these bait fish up, those birds are gonna dive bomb them, and you can cast and catch a couple of bass and then that school is going to go back down. But anytime you see birds diving like this, you might wanna go inspect it. Now there are times where other fish species do this exact same thing. You know, stripers will do this, white bass will do this. So it's not always going to be bass, but you would be surprised that if you see those birds dive bombing, how many times it's bass that are pushing those bait fish up. The last situation I honestly really didn't wanna talk about because this is something that is a little bit more sneaky. I don't think as many guys have picked up on this, but I've seen it on several different lakes and it doesn't happen all year long. It tends to happen more towards the end of summer, but I've seen it where you will have these sitting still seagulls on the surface that are literally looking at bass. I know that this sounds really, really weird, but this is when I discovered this. I was actually on Lake Oneida up in New York, and there was like three seagulls that were kind of sitting out over this hump. And when I got up towards this hump, I actually saw that these seagulls were looking down into the water. Like they would be on the surface, but they were looking into the water. And I would also notice that these seagulls look like they were tracking something. You would see them paddling around and it looked like they were kind of just tracking something down below. And I started making a cast with a small swim bait to these seagulls and I actually started catching smallmouth that were below these seagulls. And what I think was happening was that these particular seagulls were actually looking at the fish. They were actually looking at the smallmouth as the smallmouth was looking for bait. And I don't know if they were waiting for that smallmouth to push up bait fish so that that seagull could take advantage of it. I really don't know what it was, but this was a real thing that happened to me. And while I was fishing Lake Oneida during that week, there was probably like seven or eight times where I would see these seagulls go going around looking down into the water. I would fire my swim bait out there and I would catch a bass. And the other thing is that these bass that I was catching were always better than average size. So I don't know if they were loner bass. I really don't know, but they were always better than average size. I really love using birds to help me find fish. It cuts down on a lot of time. Now, if you guys are interested in more fish finding techniques. You can actually watch this video right here where I actually kind of compressed about four hours of fishing time into about 12 minutes and showed you the reality of what finding and catching bass looks like. So don't forget to hit that subscribe button, comment below, and I'll see you guys in the next video.